Welcome to the Geek Easy, fellow geeks. Let's open a beverage of your choice because today we will be reviewing the Nun. Uh, I bought this a couple days ago, watched it like the same day that I uh, bought it. And I needed to take a couple days to process it so I could give a good review. So, this is a movie that is in the Conjuring universe. It stars Demian Bashir, B-A-C-H-I-R, Tasia. For Miga. Alright, so it starts out with a couple of nuns in a nunnery in Romania. They're going down a hallway. It's really dark and foreboding. And they get to a doorway. And it says, uh, like, God ends here, or something like that, in a, I think it's Romanian. And they're afraid, and, the, you know, this older one, more experienced one, says, you know, you know what to do. And so she opens the door, goes, and she gets pulled in, and she's, so she's screaming. And the other one runs off, and wraps a noose around her neck and jumps out the window and hangs herself only to be found like the next day by a guy who is delivering food to the nunnery. Okay. Now later on you have a a priest who is summoned to the Vatican, and he is being ordered to go to that nunnery to investigate the suicide of this nun. Because, you know, it's you know, suicide in the church, the Catholic Church is a grave sin. You, you, you do that, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to hell. And they want him to uh, go to this uh, nunnery and investigate it and see if the the grounds are still holy. And so he, you can tell by what the cardinal. That's, you know, it's priest, uh, bishop, cardinal, those are the guys with the red hats and stuff. Uh, you can tell that there's something else going on with his orders on that. But uh, he says, we want you to go check this out. And they're going to send a, novi uh, a young Nov <laughs> novice nun, she hasn't taken her final vows yet, to accompany him because this is a cloistered uh, convent, meaning that men are not allowed in beyond a certain point, even, even priests. Uh, and but I go, well, why are you sending... This woman is just, she's familiar with the area. So they go to investigate this suicide. They, they get, uh, they go to Romania, they meet the guy that found him, and you automatically start getting an understanding there's something weird about this because none of the people in town trust 
that place. They don't talk about the place. There's, you know, something, you know, about the Romanian people that are, uh, that just, Romania, I guess at this time it was back in the 50s or even now, from what I understand, there are certain beliefs that still are from way back. And they're just like, no, nah, there's something wrong with this place. Uh, they don't go up there. So this, the person who found him was Canadian. He's French, but he's French-Canadian. That's kind of a running joke in the, in the movie. But he takes him up there. And the priest and the novitiate nun start to investigate, you know, they find the body because, you know, he is, the guy who delivered the stuff, he had never met any of the nuns because he just dropped the food off in this one little place and there was a door that would go from where he dropped it off as a freezer and him because he, he'd never meet any of these people. He left the body of the nun in there, but when he gets there, she's sitting up. And he's freaked out because the body, he had laid the body down. It was lying, she was lying flat when he got this. So you, you, you automatically know something's going on. And so they go inside and start to investigate. They talk to the mother superior. And this is the... And you start finding stuff out. You know, they, they go and start doing the investigating. And this is one of those movies that is a really kind of a slow burn. It's not, uh, it's not like a slasher movie where there's a lot of, you know, a lot of action, a lot of, you know, sl you know slicing people up. It's, there's a lot of, scares and tensions being built up. It's got this dark and moody uh, uh, tone to it. And it, there's not a lot of jump scares in it, which is a thing with the more modern horror movies. Even though that does start to happen a little bit near the last third of the movie. But you, you find out that uh, you find out that there was a, a demon that had been uh, summoned into this place centuries ago. And so one of the things that needs that is being done there is what is referred to as perpetual ador adoration where uh, someone is always at a certain place praying, you know, 24 hours a day. It's like one person takes, is constantly doing it for a certain amount of hours, the next person comes along, and these are nuns obviously doing it, even though it you know, doesn't necessarily mean, need to be, but here, this is a convent, so it's going to be nuns. Uh, you know, be done, and they, they can't stop praying because it's supposed to be keeping this thing at bay. And... While it doesn't uh, rely on jump scares, one thing that I did notice that they did have a bit of, of an over-reliance on, which would sort of telegraph what is supposed to be a scary part, I guess, is uh, like they'll be standing at one place, you know, one of the characters will be standing there doing something, they'll be looking around and he'll, the camera will follow their look around and then it'll come back and then something's behind him. And then, you know, so it's supposed to go, oh, hey, you know, what's, what's that? And then, you know, they'll boom and then, you know, the camera will swing away again and it'll be back. So it's not really jump scares, but, you know, they have a, there's, That happens a bit too much in 
in the later parts of the movie. And then you start getting a little bit of a jump scares a little later on. But other than that, I don't, you know, that's one thing I liked about the movie was that it didn't have an over-reliance on jump scares because a lot of movies these days do that. And I really did sort of like this slow burn build up and uh, you don't really get a good look at the nun, the bad nun. You don't get a really good look at her until most about halfway through the third act or even more. There's a couple times you see just, just quick, you know, looking like the uh, standing there and uh, like a flash of lightning. And so you get that. The one thing that, that is really kind of cool about this movie, you know, aside from Slipper, is ev everyone there except for the priest and the novitiate nun sometimes. Though not all the time, because, you know, is all the people, all the nuns are wearing a habit. You know, it's the... And so if you're seeing them anyway, anywhere except from the front, you can't see their face. So if you're seeing from the side or the back, you can't, you know, get a really... You can see, obviously, see someone who's there, but you can't see who it is. And it also, you know, if you're standing in a darkened room, and this place has no electricity or no electric lights, so you don't get a lot of, you know, light in here, just like people using uh, candles or flashlight. Uh, sometimes you don't really get a good look at a person's face until the light is directly on it. And that is really kind of a cool, you know, aesthetic choice. Uh, but it is a really good movie and there's you know, everything that seems to happen isn't forced it's there's even though there are a couple little tropes in this movie like the priest is haunted by a something that happened in his past you know where someone had died and now the demons are being using that against him that's that is a kind of a trope that you know it's been used Maybe a little too much. But uh, it's not done the same way in this one that it is in a lot of other stuff. And it is used kind of creepily in this one. Uh, and everything pays off. Like there's a scene, you know, uh, where... Back back in medieval times, uh, when people were buried, there would be a bell attached to the grave, and a little string would go into so the person in the grave could reach it, and you know, because back in the day, people would be buried. You know, sometimes some, they were mistaken for dead and weren't really, so they'd be technically buried alive. And so if they came awake, they came back, you know, to consciousness or whatever, and they were buried in this coffin, they'd start pulling out and ring the bell, and there's someone up standing watch above. They'd hear the bell and they'd, you know, kind of dig them up. There was, you know, explanation as to that. And that comes in later on in the movie. In fact, that's actually where the phrase graveyard shift for the shift, you know, late at night 
come from is you know people would be sitting all night in the graveyard <laughs> listening for the bell but uh but yet there's the tension at the end is really really ratched up by the end and I think they did a really good job so I'm going to give this a 4.25 out of 5 and say if you are a fan of horror movies and you don't like you know, slasher movies but you know come on how could you not like slasher movies but if you like you know the kind of more tension filled non jump scare type movies haunted movie this is one to get so like I said 4.25 out of 5 uh, pick it up watch it and enjoy it and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below and like subscribe most of all enjoy your scary movies